everybody, Julie Murphy here and welcome to another Awaken Your Relationships. You know, I am the money chick. I have spent over 25 years being a financial planner. And why in the heck are we talking about relationships? Because we either work things out and we act it out and we do it through our money, through our health, or through our relationships. And Rita and I have been chatting now for almost two years. Hard to believe. Woohoo! Why? Because um, we're saving lives. We're helping people be happier. And so don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, and notification bell, not only on my channel, but also on Rita's. Why? Because we are going to help you get to a life that you absolutely love. Whoop, woo! So Rita and I today are going to go step-by-step step in how to follow, uh, to release your past. And um, so I thought I would be the testing dummy for the day. <laughs> So as many of you may or may not be aware of, Rita definitely helped me through um, my divorce process. You know, I can't even believe it's like almost four years ago now that that ended. And I found you before it ended because everything that Rita was saying on her channel was um, activating in my life. Um, and uh, so as consciousness continues to open up, uh, Rita and I were talking about the fact that Things are changing at lightning speed these days. And um, not only are you changing at lightning speed, but so are all your past relationships. And so you're getting the opportunity to actually peel the onion to deeper layers of healing, right? Is that a fair way to say it, Rita? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so, um, and I'm, I'm too finding this on the money front, you know, people who have had these money patterns for years um, they are breaking out of these patterns and they are finding lives that they love. And um, you can only do that if you keep like unpacking it. And I always say the only way uh, is through it. You have to you have to go through the healing. You have to go through the feelings. You have to go through all that. So uh, today, Rita and I are going to go through that step-by-step -step process. Rita's going to walk me through it for my own. And then we thought we'd go live so you can walk it through with me. And if you need to go deeper, get a hold of Rita. She's the queen bee of this arena. <laughs> you know, it was funny. I had friends over um, the other day, college friends. And, uh, you know, I've been with my husband since I've been 20. So, I mean, that's like 29 years now, yeah, you know, yeah. to, and, and so we've been through the ups and downs of everything. And, you know, the thing with families whether it's your parents or, or your spouses or your exes or whatever, they're the last ones to acknowledge the growth and the evolution that we've made. And they're the ones that sometimes hold on to us the hardest to try to pull, to pull us back in. And so we had sure. friends over and I was, um, and I was coaching them through something and my husband was listening. Oh, yeah. And as he was listening, um, you know, he started to be like, but you don't have to listen to, you know, he was trying to be funny because we've been, you don't have to listen to every, you know, things that Rita say, and maybe you don't want to do that. And, yeah. you know, and, uh, and my friend says, says to him, turns to him and says, oh no, Rita is very good at what she does, you know? And so we're evolving. I'm evolving. You're evolving. Our relationships are, are evolving. If people watch the emails they're getting, uh, many women are stepping into that role of being balanced because they have to. We right, don't have the right. luxury to be codependent anymore. We don't have the luxury because as the world gets stressed out, people with mental health concerns are going to keep blowing things up. And more people who were fine now are stressed and they're reverting back to um, the lessons that they needed to learn maybe when they were 16 or they needed to learn when they were 13 or they needed to learn when they were 10 or six or four, you know, people are being pushed by mm -hmm. the stress of the time to right. revisit the issues that they thought they buried. And the tendency for most people is to point and say, this is your fault. You did this to me. That's you true. made me do this. <laughs> and, yes, and, I've and, heard that before. <laughs> I know, no kidding, right? And so for the person who, who's being said that, you know, they may be like, what are you talking about? I just told you that I'd be home five minutes later than normal. Why is this such a big deal? Or, um, or you know how I like to say it, Rita? Mm -hmm. I like to say it like 
the reaction of somebody else doesn't match the current uh, environment. It's like a hyper response to what's actually happening in the present moment. And I've right. actually had the opportunity with um, clients for years when they've reacted about like the stock market, like, okay, but the stock market goes up and down. And if they're having this hyper reactivity, I have learned that I have to dig on an emotional level to get to that core of what's really causing it because it's not the present moment. It's coming right. from something else. And, and right. that's a huge opportunity for healing. Yeah, it absolutely is. So anything that triggers you, me, our spouses, our exes, our kids, our, our coworkers, anything that triggers is actually an opportunity. Because if it's a hyper response, then it's related to something that's unresolved. And mm. normally it's not at the surface. It's like, right. um, you know, you could, you could only get our astronauts to the moon when everything aligned perfectly. You know, right. it couldn't be in the wrong phase. It had to be the right speed. Everything had to align perfectly. And when you're triggered, it's as if a doorway opens. Exactly. <laughs> That's so true. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a doorway. And so it really doesn't matter what's triggering someone. And that's what we're going to work on with you today, because it doesn't matter what triggered you. It could have been that you were looking out your window and saw a car that looked like the priests you know, yes. when you were a kid. Right. And right. your mind would immediately go back to that thought and your body would immediately have that reaction. You would be in, ensconced in fear and anxiety and anger and rage. Right. And so it really doesn't matter if someone's doing something to us or not. Our per I will also say if it's our perception that they're doing something to us because they're not actually doing anything to us. They're just in their shit. Yes. Like it has zero to do with you. That's why I keep reminding myself of the book, um, The Four Agreements, um, because The Four Agreements says, don't personalize. Somebody else reacts or triggers about something don't personalize it because their reactivity, we think they're doing it to us, but they're not. They're just triggering about something else that has nothing to do with you. Right. And they, they're they coming from an unconscious place. They're coming right. from a place of reliving a time when they were helpless, when they were overwhelmed, when they couldn't right. do anything. And their only option was to fight back. That's the majority of the people, right. you know, unless right. they're psychopaths or sociopaths. Right. And, right. um, but for most people, even if they're narcissistic, you know, even if they're borderline, even if they've got ADD, you know, they've got good hearts and they're good people. Right. And right. it's mainly that they don't know how to manage how they feel and they don't realize that um, the rage or the anxiety they feel doesn't isn't true in the present moment. It was true in a past experience, hmm. but now it's no longer true. They're adults with resources, right. with friends, with opportunities, and it's a whole different day in the world. Right. We know right. more than we knew 20 years ago. Right. There's more help, more technology. Who was on Zoom 20 years ago? Nobody. Now everybody. Everybody, <laughs> everybody is. Zoomed out. Right. Yeah. So, okay, so I want to take women through a healing today by doing it with you. Yeah. Now, right. the, neat, the neat thing about healing is that you don't actually have to figure it out. You know, the difference between how you coach people and how I coach people is you work with their belief systems and Correct. you try to find out what their belief systems are that are blocking them or sabotaging them. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. Very my, mind orientated. Yeah. My method is that um, it's, you're subconsciously reacting to something, right? Your mind is creating a story mm -hmm. that you're helpless, that you're something. Right. And if you want to um, let go of that, you come back to your body and your nervous system. You don't even have mm -hmm. to know the story because you probably don't remember the story. The pro that probably the story isn't even totally accurate. You know, I mean, what do you remember about being trapped with the priest? You might have snippets. You might have a, a the sun coming over a shoulder or something. Would you know, it's funny. I remember. I remember the um, 
Well, it was the ripple effect, right? Like it's all of a sudden everything came together once I remembered that part of why I wound up with all these bladder problems. And I had surgery when I was eight years old on my bladder because there was too much in the tube that leads to my bladder, to my kidneys. That's where my body was reacting to this priest inappropriately touching me. And, yeah. and so, touching you there. Correct, right? And it was just like, right. oh, yeah, lots of, yeah. I have other things come through my mind, but I'll spare people the details. But <laughs> well, we all have our own stories, don't we? Right. I mean, right. sexual assault, uh, uh, kids being molested, pedophiles, they're, they're just like, they're just like squirrels or coyotes or walruses or, or jellyfish. Right. They're another right. part of the animal kingdom. And mm. if you close your eyes that they exist, then the problems are going to get worse until sexual assault and Me Too movements and women are saying no more. And, you know, the secrets are coming out because we just kept pretending like there wasn't a problem. Yeah, just like that coach from Penn State. Everybody just ignored it and swept it under the carpet. Yes, just like the coach from Penn State, just like, you know, the the gymnasts, the Olympic gymnast things that that happened. Yeah. You know, this is this is sadly more normal than most people will express of doctors and priests and neighbors and brothers. And, and it's uncles. just about us actually releasing the emotions behind those things that occurred when we weren't ready to emotionally process things. Yeah. And, and not just didn't... ready, but we weren't capable yeah fair enough when we were a child we were incapable of processing through adult experiences right and because of that our body and our mind compartmentalized it took a snapshot so that it could protect us like in a primitive way you would stay safe if you were able to recognize and run when you recognized that that priest was coming down the street But what we were taught by our families and society is that this person, this experience we're having, it's fine. You're the one that's overreacting. You're the one that you must be lying. You must be something. You know, it's re-victimizing the victims. And so, you know, many women, they, they realize that, wait, I am an adult. I don't need to feel this way, but I do but I do. And that's what we want to help with today. Not going through the story, not really reliving any traumas, not pointing any fingers. So if women are ready, this is what I'd like them to do. I'd like them to get comfortable. So get comfortable, Julie. Not comfortable. The first thing I want you to do is put your hand on your heart. Where we put our hand, where we put our attention is where our body pays attention. And our heart's really very powerful. It's mm-hmm. got bra- its own brain cells. It sends out signals like an antenna. It's pr- your heart is the heart of you. Right. It's the core of you. And so if you want to connect with it, you put your hand on it yep. and pay attention to it, even while you're talking or doing anything else. Yep. Now, while your hand's on your heart, I want you to think of the thing that has triggered you most recently. So women on the other end, I want you to think of something like somebody driving too closely to you or someone being insensitive or um, a codependent. blood pressure is instantly going up. (laughs) Now on a scale of zero to 10, we want it to be your stress level to be at about a seven or eight. Oh, I'm there. I'm about a 10. Okay, good. Good. Wonderful. I know I'm, I'm the only weird, per, one of the weird people in the world that will say, oh, good, you're triggered. I'm this so excited for you. You're, this you're is fantastic. <laughs> this is fantastic. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do while you're pissed off and irritated is imagine a blue ball under your hand and you can close your eyes if you want. Okay. Everybody okay. on the other side, you can close your eyes, hand on your heart, imagine a blue ball underneath your hand. And that blue ball, when you breathe in, it gets bigger. And when you breathe out, it gets smaller. And I want you to say in your head, my hand is on my heart. You can say it however you want. 
I want you to feel that blue ball get bigger and smaller with your breathing and tell yourself in your head that you are breathing. You are breathing in and you are breathing out and you are breathing in and you are breathing out. Now I want you to notice the sensation on your skin. How does your skin feel? Is it warm? Tingly. Is it tingly? Yep, it's tingly. tingly. Excellent. When we're stressed out, our body narrows our blood vessels and it limits blood to the skin. It's one of the uh, causing factors of fibromyalgia. I know, right? So feel your skin. Take those deep breaths in and deep breaths out with that blue ball. That's right. Talk to yourself in your head. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. I'm breathing in. I'm breathing out. Okay, now we're going to do one of my funny little tricks. We're going to haven. Are you ready? Ready. Havening is simply stroking your arms or your legs or your face or your head. It's why being your hair having stroked or brushed feels so good. <laughs> All right, so we're going to stroke our arms 20 times and I'll count. You ready? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, Ooh, eight, moving. good, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. So that stroking puts your brain into a delta brainwave state, a calm or brainwave state. Got so now I want you to put your hand back on your heart with that blue ball and feeling your skin, kind of be present to all of it. And with your hand on your heart, I want you to tell me why you're upset. Hmm. Why am I upset? So it's funny, it always comes out in layers, right? Um, the, because it didn't have to be this way. Okay. Good. So now we're going to stroke our arms again 20 times. We're going to do it a little bit faster so it doesn't take up so much time. You can actually stroke as fast or slow as you want. You ready? Okay. okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Ooh, it's moving again. 17, <laughs> 18, 19, and 20. You know, I had a healer tell me when I first got introduced to all this stuff that when you yawn, the energy is moving. Right. So. It's because on a physical level, it shows that your body is going out of fight or flight, which is your amygdala, your sympathetic nervous system, the one that says, oh, no. And you're literally pushing your body into your frontal lobe when you do that. And mm -hmm. so your body goes from contracted, like a tightly closed flower. Right. To open where it can breathe. Mm -hmm. So when we get you out of your amygdala and into your frontal lobe, your body literally goes from closed mm -hmm. to open 
and right. now you can breathe because when it's closed, it's not safe to breathe. You need to right. run. It's not right. safe to breathe. Right. But when you're open, it's safe to breathe. And mm. so now you can release the energy, release what you were holding on to by taking a nice, big, deep breath. And that's what happens. Right. So put your hand on your heart again. Okay. And I want you to tell me now why you're angry. I don't know if I am. Okay. I mean, I think the, so, the anger is it didn't have to be this way. Okay. So I want you to follow that thread a little bit deeper. I want you to think about all the other things that have happened in the past where it didn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. The priest didn't have to touch you. You didn't have to hide. You didn't have to have those surgeries which traumatized your body. You didn't have to have the fights or the relationships or the drama that you did. None of that had to happen. So I want you to think about that and how many times you've shut your mouth. Okay. Build it up a little bit. We want to get back up to a seven or eight. Yeah. I feel like I've done so much work. Like I have really let go of all the, um, like, I understand why I called in those relationships to heal it. I also mm -hmm. know, um, that I'm in the process of doing it a different way with the mm -hmm. love of my life today. Mm -hmm. But it's um, not about what you know. Yeah, no, but I mean, like the feeling feel. like when you were saying all those things, nothing in my body triggered. Oh, nothing. good. Yeah. Good. That's why I'm well, saying it because yeah. none of that stuff is like even there anymore. Yeah. It was. And it like, shows your progress. It shows all the work that you've been doing. Right. And so like, that's where like, I literally was out at dinner the other day and I had said to the person I was with, like going, I'm just so freaking mad that it didn't have to be like this. And, <laughs> and I was sharing how it could be differently all along while having things occur at the world at large along the way that didn't, um, wasn't the highest and best for everybody involved. And how do you feel about that? I'm sad. Like, right. it's that's the sad. feeling we need to because do Because that's next anger, time. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and trust me, like, so I've gotten really good at, like, that night I was like, okay, I'm sad about this. I had a good cry. I had a sad about it. And I'm like, it doesn't need to be this way. But it was funny how, like, I unpacked that and then I had another. Because what happens, I want everybody to hear that when you have an experience like this, you feel the feelings. So I've gotten good at, I get in there, I feel the feelings, got it, the only way through. But then you're given another entree, which is the next layer, to get to the place of neutrality of this sadness that it didn't have to be this rocky road. It could have been something else. Right. And, and I knew it could be something else. But I couldn't figure out along the way as I was healing how to create that until now. Good. So what insight did you get by bringing yourself back down and out of this sadness and this anger? It actually, because I felt the feelings, then I could actually go back in in a state of neutrality to direct it in the new direction. Okay, what about now? Because you were angry a few minutes ago. So fear kicks up, right? So um, fear kicks up in terms of when other people in your life go into their patterning. So I'm really clear, super clear that I am to create or make decisions today, not from a place of fear because I keep saying that that's the wrong fuel source that it needs to come from a place of empowerment. And like when I do this with money with people, it's like, no, like here's the menu options, which, which do you choose? As opposed to saying I'm victim to all this debt or not getting a pay raise or not blah, 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 whatever the story is. And so 
my Achilles heel is the relationship piece. Like I always say, we work things out and act it out through our money, through our health and our relationships. So mine is the deepest on the relationship piece. And so how do I respond not coming from fear? So I have to feel the feelings of the fear. Which you just did. You're now neutral on it. You're not afraid of it anymore. Right. And the practice comes into play then when the other person reacts and you have to stay out of your fear. So what do you think will happen when the other person reacts the next time? Well, I had what? that experience last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean now, like going forward, because we actually did a mini healing. We're not quite done with it yet, but we did a, we did a mini reset. So you should have some clarity of thought around around the situation. And if you well, don't, I can then tell you're not right yet. now, I can tell right now that my nervous system is hijacked. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to bring it back down. Okay. Yeah. So is, is it hijacked on a zero to 10 scale? What's the tension level? Probably seven. Okay. So I want you to tap your arm at the same speed as you feel your tension. And I want okay. those people who are watching here, like if you are like experiencing emotion as you're pulling your stuff up, trust me, I'm feeling some emotion, but I've already felt a lot in the last 48 hours. So like, it's okay if this is the first time you're trying to release it because I've released a lot already. Oh yeah. Okay, so now I want you to slow down just a little bit. And slow down a little bit more. And a little bit more. It's kind of like the cool down on a treadmill. Yeah. <laughs> and then stop. Okay. So how's your hijacking? Good. I mean, I, my nervous system is back down again. Okay. And you're, and you, and the thing that women need to or anybody needs to know is that this is a practice it's like mm -hmm. a mindfulness practice mm -hmm. and it pulls you, you you have to say to yourself while you're in the shower and you're angry and you want to do something you have to say this isn't how i do it anymore right. and then you you legitimately do something that calms yourself down i'm always keeping oils one of the fastest way to calm down you don't have any oils around you do you i have rose water that i like to when i'm hijacked i go like this yeah, because the sense of smell goes yeah, right to your lot. amygdala. Yeah, it's the one rose of the water really way. does that for me. It really like, mm -hmm. it makes me, you know, because the rose water for me, roses are just such a crisp and beautiful smell. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This sacred rose water does that for me because it just brings me yeah. back to beauty. Yeah, yeah. So let's say I'm in the shower. What I'll do is, and I'm feeling stressed is I'll pick up something that smells good because I always keep things that smell good around me for that reason. And I'll start smelling it or a couple mm -hmm. things. That's one of the fastest ways to bring yourself to neutral again, too. Mm -hmm. It's a recognizing when you're hijacked and then it's doing physical things that calm you down. So the next time that that you end up um, that this person does this thing or this situation happens that happened to you. How do you want to handle it? Well, I've realized don't engage in conversation if I'm not in a state of neutrality. Like smart, don't even, don't even smart, answer, smart. don't even like respond to a text. Yeah. Don't even answer an email. Like we always have time. You know, right. a therapist once told me, um, you always can go to the bathroom mm -hmm. if you have to, no one, unless they're really you know, off the rails, right, will keep you from going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And so if you're catching that you're, re you're reacting to something, you can gracefully get out of the situation, the bathroom or go to the garage or snack behind the refrigerator door or something yep. and start to calm yourself down. So I keep oils with me. I keep um, chamomile tea with me. I have my Art. PTSD tools. And the more you do these things, the more your body gets um, hardwired into staying right. calm. That's beautiful. So we always can take 
a few breaths. In fact, we have to take a few breaths. We can always take five minutes. And in five minutes, if you use smells and touch and breathing and visualization and uh, herbs, right. if you do those things in just a few minutes, you can bring yourself back down. Now, the thing that's happening with your body right now is your brain is detoxing cortisol. When you took your brain from oh no, to it's okay, your body, your brain said, oh, we don't need to hold oh, on. So to I that. have this like, like right here. It's like shooting oh. up. So mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about because the cortisol just goes whoosh, up my system. And mm -hmm. so it's like, okay, so how do you do that? Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I know exactly every, what you're talking about. Yeah. Every time we say we, we stay in that stressed out pattern, even if we deserve, you deserve to be angry that someone, you know, molested you when you were a kid, you deserve to be angry about that, but it's not serving you. Yeah. It's not like, serving I, I, you. Yeah. I'm, it's funny. Um, and because I'm my subconscious are, mind. I'm using it, yeah. I'm using it as an example for other women too. Yeah, I mean, because my subconscious mind buried it, so I didn't remember for a long time, but um, then I remembered it after a hypnotherapy session. Um, and so then to me, okay, now I'm aware, right? Now I understand that my relationships were fear-based relationships that were based on the trauma or rejection that I had with the priest before seven years old and that other person had in, um, relationships before um and when you can start to recognize that it's a trauma meeting a trauma and then somebody decides i'm moving out of my trauma but this person's still in their trauma um you can't the other thing i've learned is there's nothing you can do about the other person and their trauma and because god knows i tried and um you have to just allow it to be exactly what it is and where it is because your job is to just raise your light and to raise your stuff and it's really hard for us to believe sometimes that um by doing our own then it raises it for everybody else and um i'm living proof of that i am watching that happen and that's where some of this new um layers of my own healing and letting go is happening because I'm watching the fact that so I kept pulling it up pulling it up pulling it up pulling it up and just doing my work my work no other work for everybody my work and it's raising the bar of everybody around us and um yes. that's where it's like I just need to feel the feelings of that everybody is elevating today and it came in the package that it was supposed to be in so that everyone can just do their work on some level or not do their work. I mean, people can choose. I mean, what I know to be true in the work I do is that you're going to call a crisis in your life if you don't do your work at some juncture, even if yeah. it's not until you're 55 years old you will hit a trauma or a rejection of some crisis that you will call in, whether it's a health crisis, a financial crisis, or a relationship crisis. You're going to call the crisis in because that's going to be the catalyst for you to elevate yourself. And right. so I'm always telling people, you don't have to wait for the crisis. You can start to shift it and step into your power now. Right. We can either um, allow the cortisol that's in our brain, the old snapshots of memories that happened we can either let those things control us or we can decide that we don't want to live that way anymore mm -hmm. irregardless of what's going on around us we no longer want to be controlled by our own fear right and when you recognize that you're being controlled by that fear mm -hmm. then you have to do whatever you can whatever it takes to get out of the fear so you can see what's really going on you know, you yesterday I said all the words of exactly what you're saying. I said all those words, but I didn't say them very nicely <laughs> because right. I was triggered in my sadness. Yes. Right. So yes. I watched myself yesterday and it was just like, because I was just like trying to shine the light, answering the questions, but I was so freaking mad at the time. I was, yes. 
yes. spicy Julie came out and it's like, okay, wasn't really in neutrality. Okay. I'm hijacked. Okay. Yeah. Get out of the conversation. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know, the next... Because then I'm just sitting here going, I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing this again. I'm not doing this again. Yes. The rule of thumb is if you have any kind of emotion, Look for your own triggers. And I'm constantly cleaning these things up because the, the your, your light just gets brighter. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what happens when you clean it up. Your vibration gets brighter, your light gets brighter. So if I feel any sort of negative thought anymore in my head, I immediately stop and I say to myself, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out, I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. And I keep saying that, usually with my hand on my chest. I'm breathing right. in, I'm breathing out. And I very much so, I want people to hear this, that um, you are in charge of your vibration. And what that means is this means, you know, I have a, um, another teacher, Elliot Jackson, um, he channels source. Um, and he talks about there's the four pillars of our being. There's the mental the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual. And um, he really helps people in the spiritual realm. I, as I see it, you help people in the other realms, you know, the mental, the emotional, and the physical, because you help actually the trifecta on that the one. You're, you're hitting all those buttons, right? Yeah, it's the practical application of healing. It's not just esoteric and you should do right. dot, dot, dot. Right. And so what I have found in the channeling with source that um, your job to do your vibration. So what you just helped me do today was to raise my vibration out of where I was. But this is where self-love and self-care comes into play, meaning that I was super conscious yesterday. I ate very clean because I was like, I am in my reactivity because by eating clean, what would I have done 10 years ago? I would have grabbed a couple cans of Diet Pepsi, a bag of Ruffles potato chips and Dean's French onion dip. That was, that was my thing to hijack my nervous system even further because that doesn't calm your nervous system down. I have to, you have to alkaline. I had a green juice yesterday. I made sure I had a green juice. That was a one that's built to get your digestive enzymes going. Cause it was like, okay, I have to digest through this experience of my life because my digestive system locks up and I can't go to the bathroom when I am in this place. And so I did everything. So from the, what I was putting into my mouth to help my vibration. So that's the, the, the physical, right? Yes. You were helping me in my nervous system, which is the physical, right? Yes. And and so we have to realize that we are our own healers. Like, yes, we have to show up in our lives for ourselves. And and I, Rita, you and I, when I hadn't built, the, I don't call you near as often as I used to, right? Like, because I was like, how do I get out of this? You know, and, and I always tell people, it's like, you, it's okay to have this other person that helps you on the bridge when you haven't fully built your own muscle yet. But like I built the muscle enough and I was so excited when I stood on the scale this morning because this has been unpacking for about a week in my world. And I stood on the scale and I was a half a pound lighter than I was a week ago. And I was like, so I went through all that, didn't bloat up in inflation, in, in inflammation. I didn't put pounds on because I packed too much crap in. I also from the physical made sure I was on the elliptical and the treadmill and lifting weights all week long. So not only was I put in the right food, but the exercise, those are things that raise your vibration while I'm trying to process through the emotional stuff because it was the next layer that was unpacking. And, and it's really, really important that as you transition through these things to be mindful of what you are putting into your mouth and how you are exercising while you're doing the clearing. Well, let me give a, a good visual. So I've been, um, I, I look at, I look at Van Gogh's Starry Night. It's like just to my right. And I look at it 
Monday through Friday when I'm in my studio working, it's mm -hmm. always right in front of me. And depending upon what I'm listening to, it either looks like it's I'm under the ocean or it looks like I'm in the air or, you know, or it's energy that's moving. We're in this flow of energy like a river. Right. Now, I watched uh, Will Smith did uh, Welcome to Earth, a great series that that Will Smith hosted recently. And the last one was um, Whitewater Rapids. Mm hmm. And the metaphor was, you know, we're really, we're in this, this river of moving energy right. and we're going to come across rapids. And if we keep our wits about us, then we can navigate the rapids and mm -hmm. get to the other side of it. But if we let ourselves be swamped, be overwhelmed, be hijacked, and we don't write ourselves, we don't steady ourselves. Right then we're gonna go over in the rapids, we're not gonna move forward and we might drown and get sick and have injuries. And But if you can keep yourself stable when the normal natural rapids of life happen, you can't control the emotions of the people around you. They literally legitimately have their own storyline they're telling themselves in their head and you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So you just have to let them live their story so that they can work it out for themselves. Right. But that's the rapid. When everybody's coming to you and trying to pull you into their pain and blame you for how they feel, that's the rapids. You got to steady yourself. You want to practice before you get there. You want to make sure that you're not exhausted, that you're you're that you're not you jacked up on caffeine or you're not jacked or up drinking caffeine. alcohol, yeah. right? Yeah, that you've studied a little bit, that maybe you've got a friend behind you, so it's the two of you going through the rapids. It's not you by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so if we look at life as we're in this river of things we can't control, we are literally on a planet being protected by solar wind rocketing around the universe at a million miles an hour in right. only one universe of multiple universes. Right. The science shows that right. if you think that you're controlling this, you're delusional. So your job is to be so like, true. I'm in this river. I don't know why, but I better find food and I need to keep steady and I better have a good boat. And it's about you learning how to be an adult, mm. how to make sure that you are whole within yourself and making sure you get what you need that right. maybe you didn't get when you were a kid, right? but you still need it. And now it's your responsibility to give it to yourself, which is self-love. Yep. which is calming yourself down, staying out of dramatic people, sociopathic, you know, triggering whatever stuff with other people, staying away from that, right. keeping yourself steady and grounded. Right. Be smart. Right. Women aren't smart. We were told and taught to be stupid, to give away our power to everybody, to allow arm ourselves candy. to be intimidated, to be arm candy, to be, to have our rights taken away, to have to earn less no money. Boss, por favor. Oh my God. <laughs> Enough. Enough. We're not stupid. We're smart. We're powerful. We're strong. We're resourceful. And it takes us getting out of our own little vision of how we're helpless and recognizing that we are a force to be reckoned with. I keep saying that, that women are where they're at because women are not stepping into their power. Yeah, and they're too scared and their body hijacks them. And they're either anxious Let's do or it, ladies. Or Woo I know. So <laughs> next time, the next time someone tries to pull you into their crap, number one is that um, you don't respond until you regulate your nervous system, period. Right. There is no... You know, even if you're standing there and they're yelling at you, put your hand on your heart, do your breathing. If you're not able to leave, if you're cornered, hand on the heart, breathing, wait. Right. You know, we've got lots of tricks to calm yourself down and then respond. That's always the answer. Just like you did all those many times when you had traumatic whitewater things happen to you, you found your stability again. You have to be stable always. if you're going to make good decisions. And if, and you were responsible and, and, for And, and it's stable. okay. I want to tell people this. It's okay in whatever timing that takes you. Right. Right. That's, that's, Sometimes it takes a while. We need to be okay that our timing is perfect. I, yes. I was watching this happen with my kids. Um, I have one daughter who's like me where she's like, do, 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 do,
And then my other daughter is like the creative little fairy who's like the musician. Right. Yeah, I've and, seen um, the pictures. They're hilarious. Yeah. They're awesome. And, and um, it's fascinating to me to watch. Um, I, I had interrupted my daughter who's wired like me and I said, no, no, no. Mary Kate's timing is okay. It's perfect. Like, allow it to um, just let her come up with the answer when she comes up with it because. I think it's so important for all of us to know that our timing is perfect for us and it doesn't matter if it matches somebody else's timing. You know, right. I, I, you know what, I, I, even on a money front, I um, am in the process of uh, buying a business from this woman that's going to double the size of my company. And she is extremely fear-based in this process. Like, it's funny, I didn't only get the example, and this is probably important to share with people that when it shows up in one area, you're going to get slammed with it at your workplace, in your personal life, everywhere, at the exact same, in, in, in the same because time it's not frame. about everybody else. It's about Because it's you. about what needs to shift in you. That's why it's, it's showing up you. everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. You think you're seeing it. You know, one of the examples is, let's say you're diagnosed with cancer. Suddenly, your subconscious dials in and sees all the cancer resources that were always there. You see, you see cancer here, you see cancer there, you see a story here. What happens is it all exists. It's all there. Right, right. And when you're looking for something, like if you're looking to be hurt, if right. you're looking for a bad guy, if you're looking right. for a bully, right. if you're looking to be victimized, right. it's out there. There, oh, are, yeah. there, there are lions chasing wildebeests all the time, cleaning out the sick and the weak and the old. Right. You know, right. so it's out there. And if you don't see it, you are going to be victimized. Mm -hmm. But if you see it and you avoid it and you make smart decisions and you take good care of yourself, then you can avoid a lot of problems in your life. Right. You know, because yeah, so you just have to trust your timing. Everywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. trust your timing. Trust yeah, your timing. Yeah, there's so much more going on than we can even imagine ever. Yeah. You know, you have to yeah. allow the flow. All right. Well, you know what, Rita? I am so grateful for another awesome chat. Um, Thank you. And how do, how do people get a hold of you? Well, they can go to my website, RitaHickmanCoaching.com, or they can hop on YouTube or Facebook and just type me in, and you'll find me in a jiffy. I've been putting material out for like 15 years. I've been helping women help the next seven generations because that's our mm -hmm. thing. As mm -hmm. we get stable, then it's our, it's our job to help the other people who are in our community, our children, our grandchildren, the people we love, our friends, our parents. You know, yep. if we if we get stable, which is what needs to happen first, then it's our job to be that light, to be yep. that positive vibration yep. that holds sacred space for people to evolve in the way that they do without harming ourselves mm -hmm. in the process. Right. Exactly. And by all means, you guys can go to awakenyourwealthbook.com and get a free copy of my book. And you just have to pay for your own shipping. And I too am gonna start doing um, uh, group coaching. So people can now sign up. Uh, it's three month packages that we're gonna start here in March. And um, you can, you'll see me once a week and I can help you financially go through your process. So again, when that's all coming up, don't forget to hit that subscribe, like, and notification bell on my YouTube channel and Rita's please, because we are here to help you create exactly the life you desire. Exactly. Awesome, thanks Rita. Thanks, <laughs> Bye, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.